we are here on chapter 15. What is going on? Hmm. It's so weird to be back here, Sarah says, as we pace the corridors of our old high school, Cleaner Academy. It's the opening night of Romeo and Juliet, and Nikki has promised to save Sarah and I a pair of tickets, encouraging us both to come along. I'm kind of getting used to it now, I say, but my first time coming back here was definitely weird. I think back on the day Gray and I had snuck into the school and my stomach turns unpleasantly. We still haven't... We still haven't spoken since the last time we were here, and I'm definitely feeling his absence. Taking in a deep breath, I force myself not to think about it. Tonight is all about supporting Nikki's work with the play, seeing with the play and seeing my costumes in action. The rest of the world can wait until tomorrow. The classrooms we pass by are dark. The lights are all turned off for the evening, while everyone gathers in their in the auditorium for the play. We we're so different back in school, don't you think? Sarah is still talking. Her arm looped around, looped through mine. Speak for yourself. I like to think I've retained my youthful character, I tease her. She snorts loudly and two of us giggle like the school kids we used to be as we reach our doors to the auditorium and claim our tickets. The place is packed when we enter, both students and parents chatting in their, and finding their seats, all waiting excitedly for the show to start. Though the lights are dim, we find our places easily, up in the very front row. I was, I'm just about to sit when a familiar voice calls, us, calls over to us. Ichiko, you made it! Nikki greets us with a grin as he comes over. And Sarah, I hardly recognize you. Yeah, Sarah had a whole 180, because she had, like, colorful hair, right? And stuff like that. Ditto! I have not heard anyone say that in a while. <laughs> when did you get so tall, Sprout? Sarah greets him with a hug, and I hang back as they reunite excitedly. It's been a long time since they've seen each other. It's so good to see you all, Nikki turns to me. Just wait until you see your costumes on stage. You look amazing. I was gonna say, how is it possible that they have not seen each other? But I'm gonna assume it's not actually a small town. Because in my head, this place is a small town, but uh, this is not. I can't wait. I squeeze my hands together excitedly, glancing towards the red curtains that are currently hiding the, the stage from sight. Have the garments held, held up okay during the rehearsals, I ask Nikki. It gives a swift nod. They're perfect. No problems at all. And the kids love them. I smiled to myself, happy to hear it. All my hard work is going to pay off tonight, and I'm ecstatic about it. I was just telling Michiko how weird it is to be back here. Sarah's voice cuts in between us. How long has it been now? About ten years. Oh, it's a high school reunion. Nikki's forehead creases in confusion. But it's not the first time you've been back, is it, Michiko? Oh, uh, is it? Michiko told me that to- Oh, fuck! Two of you snuck in here a while back. I freeze for a moment, suddenly remembering that I had told Nikki that Sarah and I had broken in here, when really, it had been me and Grey. Sarah gives me a sidelong glance before she laughs out the question with a whip of her hand. Of course we did, but we didn't get to see much. This time we were actually invited, she says. Sarah is the girl. She, <laughs> she says, earning a laugh from Nikki and diverting his attention. I give her a grateful smile when he's not looking and she winks discreetly. Well, the show will be starting soon, Nikki says with a wistful look towards the stage. He wrings his hands together nervously. I should head backstage and give the kids one last pep talk. I'll be right back. He smiles brightly before he hurries off with Sarah and I sit, making ourselves comfortable in surprisingly plush auditorium chairs. Hmm. Lying to one of your oldest friends, are you? Tut tut, Jiga. Sarah leans close and whispers. Like a very pointed look, I panicked. I didn't know what else to say. She grins and flips her hair dramatically. Lucky I'm so amazing at covering for you. Though I roll, at, uh, roll my eyes at her, I can't stop myself from smiling. Despite us teasing each other relentlessly, Sarah really is a good friend, and I appreciate her jumping in back with her. I'm glad we came tonight, she continues. I was getting worried you would you were never going to leave your house again. Of course I was. I've just been busy, that's all. I say dismissively. Busy with Gray, she teases. Actually, no. <laughs> busy avoiding him where I like it. Instead, I say, no, busy with work. I've had more clients walking into the boutique. It's been really good. She smiles at that, nudging my shoulder with hers. That is good. I'm happy for you. I know how hard you've worked to build up the business. I don't get to say anything else before the chatter of the crowd suddenly hushes as the curtains pull back from the stage. Nikki comes back out to take a seat right uh, with us right as a single spotlight flicks on, an excited grin acro spread across his face. Then the narrator begins her part and the show begins. Romeo and Juliet is certainly not an unfamiliar story to me, but it's fun to see the props and everything else the Academy has come up with for the production. As I expected, they've really pulled, all, uh, pulled out all the stops. It really looks like a professional production. My eyes widen when the first of the actors wearing my costume steps onto the stage. It's lo it looks just as I had imagined. Better, in fact. 
A wave of pride washes over me as I watch the show, fixated on my work and how it looks on stage against the props and under the different lighting effects. The actors play their parts perfectly, ensnaring the attention of the audience through their performances. By the end of the show, my face hurts from smiling so much. I don't even mind the tragic ending. The actors end the performance to a round of applause. There I stand with the rest of the crowd clapping her hands together. That was amazing! I yelled to Nikki through the noise. He's smiling from ear to ear. I don't think I've ever seen him so happy before. I had to run backstage for a few minutes, but I'll be back, he says with a grin. Don't leave before saying goodbye. Nikki darts off and we smile after him. It's funny to seem so excited about something like high school play, but it's also really sweet. <laughs> Nikki, a teacher. Who would have thought? Sarah laughs from beside me. And the drama teacher at that. If you had told me in high school that his passion was theater, I'd never have believed you, she adds. I giggle too, shake my head in disbelief. I know, right? I'm still having trouble adjusting to the thought. He was such a rascal back then. When the auditorium lights come back on, we pile, into, pile out into the school hallway with the rest of the audience to wait for Nikki. While we wait, we look over the facility, oh, no facility, faculty portraits that are hung on the walls, pointing out the familiar faces and laughing at old memories. Oh, look, our science teacher's still here, remember her? Sarah holds a finger up to the glass and wrinkles her nose. Yeah, she was awful. I say as I look over her shoulder and find a familiar pinched face staring back at me from the frame. Poor kids. I look at the pictures further down the wall as I trail along, finding a few class photos that look familiar. Sarah, check this one out. I wave her over, holding a finger up to the glass to point out two figures in front of the picture. Oh. It's us! Sarah squeals, nudging me aside while trying to get a better look. Oh my god, look at my hair. I can't believe you let me leave the house looking like that, she pouts. I laugh lightly. I think the purple looks great. Maybe you could bring the style back. I'd love to see the look on Chad's face if I did, she ah. grins. Did she go over here? Nikki shouts. What about Sarah? <laughs> He's constantly only uh, attention to me. I turn at the sound of Nikki's voice, finding him standing with a few other people near the auditorium oh. doors. I've been looking for you, he says with a smile. Sarah and I head oh. over. I want you to meet a few people. These are some of the parents from the school's parents association. I give a small nod and greeting and they all smile at me while Nikki speaks. They were asking me who designed the costumes on stage and didn't want to pass up on meeting the design herself, he grins. Aw. Hello, ladies. That's right, says the well-dressed woman. Woman. The her? <laughs> you did a fantastic job on the costumes. Congratulations. The annual production hasn't been that well just in years. Yes, extreme. Okay, no, wait. This is the dressed woman. This is the tall woman? Mm, I don't know. Yes, extremely well, especially for your first time working on the show, says the taller one. And this one is just third woman. <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes off, all, off of all the outfits. They were so intricately detailed. A third woman gushes, and the rest of the group all pitch in to give me their compliments. Ugh. I can do a lot more than sell a few costumes. I didn't do anything special. No, girl, take that compliment. I smell seizing the moment to promote myself. I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy the attention. Oh, now I'm intrigued. What else do you do? The same woman asks. I designed and created my own fashion line, I say proudly. I've only opened uh, my boutique recently, but you're welcome to stop by and see what I have on display. You won't regret it, I add, flashing her a smile. In that case, I'll bring my daughter. She needs a gown for the upcoming ball, she explains. And not like one of those department store dresses either. Something special. I'd be happy to design something original for her, I say, and the woman looks pleased. And what about for... The boys, another woman asked, do you do formal suits? I nod at her. Yes, absolutely. Great, I'll, be, I'll bring my son by this week too. He also needs an outfit for the ball. I hand out a few business cards with the promise of being able to take on appointments whenever they're ready. Even if I have to shuffle a few things around, it's worth it in order to snag these kinds of clients. When they say goodbye and head off, Nikki turns to me with a beaming <laughs> smirk. See, I told you everyone would love your work, he boasts. Yeah, yeah, that was a given, Sarah interrupts. Aromas is the best boutique in town. I'm just ha so happy that people are interested in seeing more, I say with a smile of my own, and I'm excited to see how the boutique grows from here. I think I can safely say would love for you to work on the costumes for the production again next year, Nikki mm. grins. I know it's a whole year away, but with you becoming so popular, I might have to book in advance. I laugh softly, giving him a fond look. Thanks for the confidence boost, and thank you for inviting us tonight too, I say, before turning to Sarah. We should head off before I get late. We say our goodbyes with the promise to all meet up together again soon, and Sarah and I leave the school. I, for a moment there, thought he invited the old gang together and was surprising me with it. And I was like, oh, bro. Tonight was fun, she grins as we stop on the corner where we'll part ways. Promise it won't be so long before we hang out again. I 
promise, I said with a nod, waving her off, get home safe. I turned ahead in the other direction, shoving my hands in the pocket of my coat as I walked. The night air is cool, but it's a nice change from the stuffiness of the auditorium. However, the closer I get to home, the more the throw of the night fades, and the mess of the rest of my life creeps in. Gray and I haven't said more than a few words to each other since the day outside the school, when he helped me drop off the costumes to Nikki. I've wanted to stop him for a chat, or even message him, but every single time something stops me. I can't stop myself from thinking that he's been giving me the side treatment on purpose. The only thing I don't know is why. Because you're not being truthful? What do you mean? He's literally told you so many times to trust him, and you're like... Nothing. <laughs> Approaching my building, head, over, head around to the back door, knowing it'll probably be unlocked since it's one of Gray's usual game nights. He's been having them more often lately, and while I don't mind him using his own space for what he wants, his silent presence didn't make things any less awkward. Using my phone to light the way, I finally make it to the door, my fingers brushing for the handle. I was like, who's this? Hey, sweetheart. No. A familiar voice distracts me and I pulled back, turning to find Ivan leaning against the back wall. He watches me through half-lidded eyes, dragging on the end of a cigarette. Mm. Where have you been? He asked casually. What do you mean, where have I been? Where have you been? Away from here. <laughs> Out. I reply curtly, reaching for the door again and entering the hallway. He's gonna follow us. Nope, oh, creepy music. Here we go. In the hallway, I can hear Gray's game night in full swing downstairs. The thought of him being so close makes my stomach clench tightly. The door doesn't close behind me, so I turn to see Ivan standing in the doorway still watching me. What do you want? I ask him, my mood quickly going huh. south. That's not a very nice way to speak to an old friend, he grins, revealing his teeth. There's something about his smile that makes me pause. Ivan has always been a creep, but the way he's looking at me now is different. He's looking at me like a cat who's trapped a little mouse under its mm. paw. You know, I thought you looked familiar. He starts talking again as he walks into the corridor, letting the door shut behind him. And then it came to me, the night of the fight. I was there, remember? Or heard the call you made, Aroma. Ah, so my name is Aroma, and then my star's name is Aromas. <laughs> if the characters were smart and new, um, like if the coding was uh, correct, like, not correct, but um, precise, they would already instantly know it's me, cause come on. <laughs> My skin crawls at the sound of the king named Goosebumps rising to the surface of my skin. How the hell did he figure it out? What do you want? I ask again, but this time the meaning is different. I have a Snickers, knowing he's both figuratively and literally got me cornered. Heard you've been meeting with some of your old gang mates, that little fella back from back in the day. What was his name? He squints his eyes at me. None of your business, I say impatiently, and he's not so little anymore. <laughs> he lets out a low laugh as though he finds his situation nothing short of amusing. Mm. Either way, it's got me suspicious. Maybe you're thinking of getting the old gang back together, he muses. I shake my head. I'm not a part of that anymore. I've got a business to run now, a whole other life. I try to walk up the stairs, thoroughly done with this conversation, but then his next words stop huh. me. Is that why you're spending so much time with your friend, the Phantom, he sneers? Hmm. Or do you just feel guilty for what you did to him 10 years ago? You don't know what you're talking about. I spit out, my brown eyes nearing at him. It's your fault the Phantom was expelled from school, he continues. Your fault that half his gang rejected him. Don't you think I know that? I snap my hands, bawling to fists at my sides again. Instead, Ivan simply grins wider. I can tell that he's enjoying mm. this. I've been thinking to myself, why would Grey want to, be, want to be so close to the woman who destroyed all of that for him? He asks. I swallow nervously around the lump in my throat, feeling my heart beating in my chest a million miles uh. a minute. Because he doesn't know who you are, does he? Not truly. Ooh, can you go away? He's like, he's like, uh, it's upsetting because he's hot. Or am I crazy? <laughs> I'm in steps closer still until there's barely a few inches of space between us. And then he stares down at me, his eyes go going cold. Why are you grunting, bro? Here's how it's going to go, Roma. You're going to stay the hell away from your old gang. I don't care if you think you're not reforming. You stay away anyway, he growls at me. Okay, and if I don't? Go to hell, Ivan, I spit back. <laughs> he laughs quietly and there's something sinister about the sound. How about I head downstairs right now and tell your friend Gray who you are and what you did to him, he threatens. Because that's what I'll do if you don't do as I say, sweetheart. You can be sure of that. I say nothing, my tongue sitting usually sitting usually uselessly in my mouth. Because what can I say? One wrong move and he'll surely spill everything to Gray. Not unless I just spill it to him instead. Then you have nothing against me, and I can't have that, I just can't. 
I haven't been preparing myself to confess to Gray all this time, only to have it stolen away from me and thrown in his face. I want to be the one to tell him. It should come from me. Do you think Gray is that dumb? If Ivan's already noticed you, I think Gray already knows too, and he's just waiting. Ivan assesses me for a moment, his cold gaze melting as his lips hooked up on one oh. side. If all that, if that all sounds so unappealing to you, you can always work with me. Bring your friends over to my game. We'd be unstoppable, he says. So he says smoothly. You really think I'd consider that? After you just threatened me, I sh shoot back at him. <laughs> his shoulders move up and down as he laughs mm -hmm. quietly. I didn't think you'd consider it anyway. I've seen the way you look at Gray, like a lovesick little puppy dog. I just break your jaw and make sure you can't talk. It has nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. Let's be real here. I don't think I can take this man down. He looks kind of kind of bulky, guys. I don't know how, how long ago my girl has been fighting, but I think this man could take us down. We're kind of rusty. It's nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. It hiss up at him. I turn to leave, but Ivan is faster. He steps in front of me, blocking my path to the stairs. I'll leave you alone, but only after I've heard you say you won't go near that old gang of yours again, he says. I've already told you I don't have any interest in joining any gang ever again. I spit out between my teeth. Ivan snickers, drawing himself up to his full height and towering over me before, I, before he steps to the side and lets me pass. I dart towards the stairs before he can block me again. Then I glare back at him, determined not to let him think he can get away with this unscathed. I'll remind you that this is my property, so I'd think twice about tr trying to threaten me if I was you. I'm sure your reputation with the police is strained enough as it is. <laughs> he surprises me by laughing, a long drawn out sound, one that sends an unpleasant chill down my <laughs> spine. You've always been fond of calling the cops, haven't you, sweetheart? He says, his tone amused. Damn, he got us there. Uh -huh. Try and see how far it gets you this time. I think they'll find a few surprises down in your basement if they look hard enough. I'm about to reply to question him about that when footsteps on the stairs cut me off. Gray appears, his eyebrows dipped in the middle when he finds us standing alone together engaged in a heated conversation. He looks taken aback and I want to say something to tell him about Ivan threatening me, even when I know I can. Ivan, you're up, he says, simply waiting for the man other man to make a move. Ivan gives me one last look before he leaves and says quietly, remember what I said. I watch helplessly as he leaves, my heart still pounding insistently. It looks as though the hammer is back in full force, and this time he's more of a threat than I ever thought. The next evening, I stand at the top of the stairs to the basement, my eyes firmly fixed on the door below. I hear music playing, but no chatter. Gray is most likely down there alone. It's time for me to finally do something about the signs between us. Stealing my nerves, I head down the stairs and stand in front of the basement door. I knock on the wood. When I get no answer, I go ahead and push open the door and walk down the stairs. Alright. Barging in. I spot Gray immediately shuffling a pack of playing cards and setting it on the table in the middle of the room. He looks up as I enter and something in his eyes turns hard. Hey. I say intensively, still hovering near the door. Hi. Okay. <laughs> he starts to feel measly seconds before he goes back to laying out cards and other various pieces of, on the table. I swallow down my doubt and step further into the room, right next to the table. I wanted to talk to you about last night. When you saw me and Ivan, I start. It's not what you think it was. Why would I think it was anything? He says tightly. He seemed mad when you left. I thought it might be. I trail off. What do I think it might be? The reason why he's being so unfriendly towards me now. No. I know he's still annoyed I left him that night. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure everything is okay between <coughs> okay between us, I say, instead. Uh, so I want to apologize for leaving without you that night, I confess. He stops this time, fixing me with those cold eyes. Just when I think I'm finally going to get an answer, he shakes his head and moves around the table. Don't worry about it. I had to get everything ready for tonight. He brushes past me and gestures his arm towards the stairs. Huh? telling us to get the fuck out. I turn back towards the stairs, but I don't leave. Instead, I face him head on, determined to get something out of him. I don't like either of these choices. <laughs> to, be, to be honest. Seems kind of pushy. Um... I don't like any of these choices. Game are you playing? Maybe I can join in, I ask hopefully. Not tonight, he cuts me off with a nod towards the door. I cross my arms over my chest and narrow my eyes at him, as stubborn as ever. Is there something you want to say to me? He asks chilly. Are you still mad about that night? I blurt out. 
I don't know, Machiko. You tell me. <laughs> he speaks through gritted teeth, and now I know I was right on the money. I said I was sorry. I had me glue. I get that. And I get that you need time to work out whatever it is that makes you not trust me. I just didn't realize it would hold us back as so much. That you would freeze up around me and take off running. You're making this really hard. How can we move forward when you're so stuck in the past, he says, his eyes flaring up. I think he knows. Just please be honest with him. I press my mouth shut and look long and hard at the floor. He's got me there. Though the mood is absolutely terrible. Is this the right time to tell him? Would it be the end of the world? I clench my hand on my side. He does deserve the truth. I can totally see where he's coming from, knowing that I'm keeping secrets from him while simultaneously holding back from being with him because of my fear sounds so frustrating. If I were in his shoes, I'd be a total loss. I'd be at a total loss on where to go from here too. The ball is in my court. I want to move forward together, if that's even that, if that's still even possible. I know I can't stall forever, and that I risk losing him the more I try. I. I lock eyes with those beautiful stormy gray eyes of his and all I can think about is how much more upset he'd be with me if I came clean. Once again, I freeze up in place and he would get a word out. If he gets mad at us, fuck it, whatever, we move on. At least we told him. Guilty conscience gone. This is not how I wanted things to go. I wanted a calm, pleasant environment. I wanted to be on his good side. I wanted to feel like we were strong, like we couldn't endure. Just leave me, Chico, he says with a tired sigh. Please. <sighs> Depressing. It turns his back on me, and I've lost any semblance of courage to continue our conversation. Feeling my heart rate spiking, I leave the basement without another word. Alright, great! This is how we end things. Bad ending. <laughs> I'm kidding. Pretty sure. Um, I don't know, guys. I, I wish our girl would just tell him, because I feel like he already knows by now. If I'd have been caught on, and Ivan doesn't seem like the smartest one of all... The great knows. I think he's been dropping hints low key. Like, well, not even low key, pretty high key because he's like, Do you trust me? Trust me. He's literally telling you to trust him at all times, and you're not doing that part at all. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. It's been beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.